everyone, and welcome to one of the most impactful days that you will have this week. I'm Dr. Jackie, host of A Balanced Life here on Black Star Network. You know, I come to this space today with just a little bit of a head cold. Most of you know allergy season is one of those things that really takes us aback. So today, bear with me. If I sneeze, if I cough, um, don't be bothered by it. Pray your girl through because you know, like I know, that allergy suffers and allergy season is one of those things that really takes us by storm. You know, I'm also being a little solemn today because we're going to broach a subject that oftentimes we don't talk about. We don't talk about in our homes. We don't talk about on television. We don't talk about in too many spaces, if you will, for that moment. So today, you know, all of this month, we've been talking about autism awareness. We've been talking about chiropractic health. But we would be remiss today if we did not have just a little bit of a conversation and dialogue about those things in life that really seem to keep us at bay from living our best life. I'm talking about sexual abuse awareness month. We, we just could not do this show and be in a space where we did not talk about it. So I have a prepared statement that I'd like to read today as we begin to get started. And then I'll bring in our guests. We're going to talk about a lot of things today. But here we go. I want to open our show today with the understanding how heavy it is to deal with the weightier issues in life the things that make it hard for us to get out of bed and face the world. In my own life, transparency is something that I'm quite familiar with. I write about in my book, Fulfill the Art and Joy of Balanced Living, about being abducted when I was in middle school, sexually assaulted, and also date rape when I was in college. You see, many of us struggle with hidden scars. And as we end Sexual Assault Awareness Month, we would be remiss not to, and as we end Sexual Assault Awareness Month, we would be remiss not to say that we see you, we hear you, and we understand you. During this pandemic, we learned so much about why the numbers were down with our children. Many of them were at home with their assailants. They were not at school, having the ability to talk to an administrator, a teacher, a coach, or a bus driver. This gives us an opportunity to let us know that we see all of the things that are happening. The pandemic left our youngest and most vulnerable home alone with their assailants. Men and women alike are suffering silently, whether it's at the hand of a friend, a family member, a coworker, or a total stranger. Don't let anyone steal your joy or your voice, even though they have stolen your innocence. Today on our show, we will discuss these and other concerns on how to overcome hidden scars. Whether you're faking it or faithing it, we pray we are able to guide you to overcoming and healing. Welcome to A Balanced Life with Dr. Jackie. We'll be back in a moment after the break. Pull up a chair, take your seat, the black with me, Dr. Greg Carr, here on the Black Star Network. Every week, we'll take a deeper dive into the world we're living in. Join the conversation only on the Black Star Network. Welcome back, everyone. I'm so excited to have um, our contributors with us today. Mocha Lee, Dr. Tierney, Corey Briscoe, Chef Rock, and of course, Charlotte Avery. You know, when we talk about hidden scars and all of the things that we face from childhood to where we are now as adults, it oftentimes isn't easy. And I want to open up with this very simple question. How hard is it to communicate to people when you're struggling? And anybody can jump in because I think struggling is one of those things that we've not mastered, but I can tell you that we're really good at masking it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I can say that in the beginning, it was very hard for me. It was hard for me because I, you know, there are just certain things that you don't want people to know. And sometimes it's easy for people to look at you 
um, and feel like you've got it all together. You know, they're dibbling and dabbling in your social media life. They think that, you know, they know you or whatever. And so sometimes it, you know, it has been very difficult, especially in the beginning, it was very difficult for me to ask for help. But I realized that I couldn't get help unless I asked for help. And, you know, so when my behavior started showing it, when my when my words started showing that I needed help and I no longer wanted to feel like I had imposter syndrome and I really wanted the help, then I just got brave and I got bold and I started asking. So now in this season of my life, asking for help comes very easy for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Dr. Tierney. Absolutely. Um, I love what you just said, Charlotte. And it's one of those things when you said when you realized that you needed the help and you were bold enough to ask for the help. You know, as a coach, I have to be very aware of that when I speak with people every day that might know they need the help, but they're not sure if they're going to be judged. They don't know, you know, me from a can of paint, so they don't know if I'm going to understand. They don't know if um, this will be something that will be used against them or they'll be the information will be used um to like embarrass them because oftentimes those things have happened, you know? So being very aware of that and very sensitive to that, the number one job that I have as a coach is to make my clients feel comfortable, you know, to let them know that they are not alone in this. You know, I coach from a place of authenticity and transparency to let them know, you know, that I've struggled nine times out of 10, the very same thing that they've, they're feeling, I have felt, I have dealt with, you know? And so the number one thing that I would absolutely say is to just really understand that we've all been there. We all may be there right now. You know, so here, here's that word again, grace, you know, exercising grace with everyone that we meet because we don't know what they may be struggling with and how they may be in their space of getting help or, or not ready to receive help. Thank you. I want to jump over to Corey for a second because, well, Corey, you used to be the only person that was of the male persuasion in your office, but, you know, you work with women and men alike. And what is it like in the corporate environment um, knowing that you have employees who struggled or who may be struggling? In what ways do you embrace or guide them towards still seeing their greatness? That's a great question, Dr. Jackie. And I think um, Dr. Uh, Tierney said it best. Um, the reality is that we as people have to come to the point where we understand grace and we have to understand how to apply grace. And I think a, a part of that, even as an employer, right, uh, KPIs and the bottom line is important, but are people more important than the product that I produce? And I think for me, it was taking the moment to realize when I invest in people, their mental health, their spiritual health, their well-being, that they often produce much better than I could ever imagine. There's a different level of, of being fully present, right? We all have had, um, even in our civic organizations where people are there, but they're not fully present. And for me, I think it is, it's, it's in that aspect of how do I help them show up and be their best selves? What can I do? What can I say? How do you create a space where people can have the conversations that they need to or guide them to a resource which allows them to do so? And I think oftentimes, even in our personal relationships, um, we find that not to be the case. So we can only imagine how that is affected and our, our corporate atmospheres. And so my approach um, and from, a, from an HR and culture standpoint is creating a space, whether that, and I, I encourage the same with other organizations, whether they're, they're groups or, or employee resource groups or other things that can be done, but you want to create commonality where people feel like they have trust and can build relationship. Because once you have relationship, you can, you often feel like you create a space of trust. Thank you for sharing that. Chef Rock, man, you guys are everywhere when you're you're doing your work in the restaurant, when you're catering, when you're sending your folks out and you're down in D.C. And oftentimes, do you find that there's a little trepidation in hiring or people moving around and about and getting things done? What do you see where you are, you know, as a mover and shaker in the restaurant industry? Well, Dr. Jackie, I think that um, there's a couple of things that sort of color my lens um, in in hiring and and seeing people. Um, 
is that, um, you know, just as uh, Corey alluded to, you, you have to see people and, and, and create space for them to be viewed and valued. If we're talking about, you know, how to, you know, create an environment where people can communicate or I can communicate um, uh, to my staff when things aren't um, sort of sort of rocking internally uh, properly. Um, so so for us, for, for me, I've always said that uh, food is just an opportunity. Right. So we focus on the food a lot in the restaurant business, obviously, uh, but we're actually in the people business. Uh, food is simply the uh, connector for us to uh, to connect with other people. And, and when we see it like that, when I when I see it like that, then the chicken sandwich or, or the pasta is not it's just an opportunity to connect with the human being, whether it be a staff member um, or, or obviously a customer and quite frankly, myself. So. Um, in, in this business, we do have a, a rhythm, right? It is uh, not often um, a, a great, it hasn't been historically a great rhythm as far as the culture in the restaurant business. But um, I think that's shifting. And um, one of the ways that, that we can do that is being, uh, as you said earlier, just, just being aware of, uh, of, of how we're feeling. And then uh, as, a, as an owner, uh, trying to create space and model the behavior that I want to see in other folks. So, and, and for me, it's centered around the food, but the food brings uh, me to other people. So that's sort of my lens on how, how I'm navigating uh, with, with staff and, and internally as well. Thank you for sharing. Because oftentimes when we think about where we work and where we're going and how we engage with each other, we have a tendency to I don't know if we're wearing our feelings on our sleeve or if we're in that space where we're just always on guard. Mocha, in dealing with your clients, and I know that fitness can be considered as therapy, how do you guide and engage people who are struggling with overcoming to that space of saying, it's okay to get out again, it's okay to move your life forward? I just, I love what we're, what we're talking about in terms of trust, in terms of helping people become their best selves. And, and what I see every day in terms of health and fitness, you're right, people have had major struggles, major struggles and incidents um, like you shared that are kind of maybe embarrassing to share. Um, and, and anything from, you know, weight loss issues, eating disorders, um, you know, just sleep problems, you, you name it, I've probably seen it or heard it in my line of business. And the main thing um, that I want to share, in addition to the trust factor that we're talking about, you have to help people know that they can trust us, you know, as the as their as their guide, as their coach. But also they have to know it's OK to fail. Of course, you're going to fail and you might fail again and again again and again and i'm i'm especially just big on let's not focus so much on let's, let's not dwell on it so much you know you do want to acknowledge your past failures or your past hurts or issues but then after you get to that point you're healing we got to move on we got to move on move forward and know that even if you trip up and fail again you get just it's got to keep going so it's that resilience it's that tenacity, you know, just all those, you know, Im important things that I really try to instill in my clients. And, um, and some days it's light and upbeat and some days, yeah, it's kind of heavy because, you know, people are, they get frustrated. They get frustrated, especially when they think about things from the past that just make them depressed or upset, or frustrated. So I'm, I just try to remind, let's be in the present moment. We got to stay present. Yeah. Thank you That's for important. sharing that. When we come back after the break, many of you have already heard and are figuring out in this moment that wherever you are, communication, trust, awareness, allowing yourself to have opportunity to let someone else in is the first step in being able to move forward. When we come back after the break, I want to continue this conversation with our contributors. And then we're going to have a conversation with our special guest, Anita Roberts, when we're back after the break. Deborah Owens, America's Wealth Coach, and my new show, Get Wealthy, focuses on the things that your financial advisor and bank isn't telling you, but you absolutely need to know. So watch Get Wealthy on the Black Star Network. Welcome back, everyone. As you can see, and as we are saying, 
life is filled with swift transition and we're all in that space where we're trying to attempting to look at ways to navigate the nuances of our lives whether you're faking it or faithing it i want to ask you now to unmask to give yourself grace to give yourself space to you know move into the next season of your life of course we're all hurting of course we all have some type of trauma and pain and trigger that sets us off without warning and without notice but i want to continue this conversation um, with our contributors because you know there's more to be said and stated um charlotte avery there was a comment that you wanted to make and i think that our audience will benefit from your words so one thing that I wanted to say and that I thought was really, really great that um, Dr. Tierney and um, Corey and Chef Rock said, one, Dr. Tierney talked about uh, um, sharing, showing grace. And then our gentleman talked about creating space. And I think one of the best ways that we can create space is also being able to share and tell our story. Because when we're authentic, when we are able to share our stories with others and let them see a little bit of the insight into us, then it makes them, I think, a little bit, to, it, it helps them to feel a little bit safer and being able to say, you know what? I'm not in this silo by myself. Mm -hmm. I can talk to this person. I can trust them. I can do that because they have now shared with me and now they have created a space for me to be able to feel safe and talk while also allowing grace to unfold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that information. Anyone else want to um, comment to that issue? Because as you all are talking and I'm listening to the flow of our dialogue, man, that T word is so hard. Mm -hmm. you no. Know, who do you trust with your innermost secrets? Mm -hmm. Who do you trust with the thing that can, I mean, literally just break you down if it got into the wrong hands, if they're talking to other coworkers, if they're talking to family members, you know, within our groups and our organizations, we're such, I mean, honestly, you know, by social media alone, all of us are connected in some way, shape, form, or fashion. And so social media has a way of, what's the word that I want to use, uh, releasing us from distance, you know, like a person can be just a click away from information that I may have shared with someone else and how we allow ourselves to engage in that platform really does matter so that even though we want to be trusting and vulnerable, we also have to be cautious. And cautious is one of those words I think that we throw around casually. It's like, oh, they're my friends. Well, no, they're just someone you know on social media. Let's talk for a moment about um, how social media has really disrupted, you know, our ability to keep things private. Well, Dr. Jack, I'm just going to jump in right here. I mean, it is a fine line. You know, I will tell you that a number of my clients have come to me from social media. It was something that I posted, a video, you know, that I might have put up or something that they were able to watch that video and say, I know that you're my person. I know that I am supposed to talk to you, you know, about this. A lot have even said, you know, I knew it was the Holy Spirit that as soon as you came across my timeline, it was you, you know. And so social media is a tool. It's I see it as no different than a hammer and it's all in how we use it, you know. So it could be the very thing that connects you to your person or it could be the very thing that we use to dismantle you know, that thing that is meant to, you know, to help us. So when we look at social media through the correct lens, it could very well be the thing that connects us to the people or the person that we are supposed to trust. Now, in thinking about who we trust, sometimes we make the mistake of thinking that just because this is mama, daddy, sister, cousin, auntie, uncle, been knowing this friend since you know, I was 12. That's the person that we're supposed to trust. But in different seasons of our lives, God will bring us different people to walk through that particular season. There are seasons in my life where my grandmother, you know, was my anchor. I'm in a season right now where my aunt Gina is my Elizabeth and she is holding my hand through this season, you know, so they're the people that we are supposed to trust with the intimacies and the intricacies of who we are and what, what we're walking through, it may change. So just because someone may not be able to be with you in this season doesn't mean that they're not supposed to be with you in the next season. And just because somebody was in with you within the last season doesn't mean that they're supposed mm -hmm. to be with you in this season. This is where for all of my believers, this is where I, I always say, 
ask the Holy Spirit to show you who your people and who your person are. Mm. If I I'm silent for a moment, go ahead. <laughs> if, I, if I could jump in on Dr. Tierney really fast. I think sure. thing. Um, one, I, I wholeheartedly agree with, with, with Dr. T. Um, but I think there, one of the things that I am learning, even as an employer, so after, after, you know, with the impacts of COVID, we really had to pivot. Like people, people were mentally spent, people were exhausted, people were dealing with things. And I realized even as an employer that I was working so hard to earn the trust of, of people, even people that I had had for a long time. We were putting in benefits, we were doing things, and we were trying to do all that we can. And then there was a point that I had to realize, even though I believe that trust is earned, the reality is trust can only be given. You can do everything right. You can, you can equip people, you can do everything you think to do, but at the end of the day, people have to, it has to be right within their spirit. It has to be right within them to give trust. And I think a part of it is we have to show ourselves trustworthy. We have to create spaces. But when we do all that and people still don't open up, we have to be okay with people going through their processes because at the end of the day, trust is given. Mm. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> you know, um, when we come back after the break, I'm gonna have a conversation one-on-one -on -one with Anita C. Roberts. We started this show today talking about um, how we could not leave this month without bringing awareness to sexual assault, the victims, the overcomers, those who are in that space of saying, my life was going just fine. And then all of a sudden, when we come after the break, we're gonna have a poignant conversation with Lieutenant Colonel. Anita C. Roberts after the break. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends, go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Welcome back everyone to A Balanced Life. And as you've been listening and hearing us, we've been talking first about how to create safe spaces for the people in our lives, the people that we work with, our children, you know, just your average everyday person, because daily we're all struggling with something. And as we walked into this new season of our lives, and when I say new, this somewhat new normal of coming through this pandemic, a lot of us were jarred in a sense of having to be in all of the time. And it conjured up some things that we thought that we had forgotten. And then they were told, or we were told that we were now able to get out and about and be among the people. And then we were triggered and jarred again because all of that uncertainty just kind of rushed back into our heads. And, you know, I, I said at the very beginning, I'm very open and honest and transparent about my life. And I am in that space where I still have moments where should I go out today? Is this, where should I go today? How many people are gonna be there? Will I feel comfortable in that space? Being sexually assaulted is not something that you just get through. It's a constant work each and every day as you're learning how to trust yourself and trust other people. Our guest today is Lieutenant Colonel Anita Roberts. Anita. Hello. Hello, ma'am. How are you today? I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for um, coming to talk to us today. Um, you are a personal friend. I love you. 
And you know that this is a space where, you know, we honestly are grateful that you have decided to come and share with us today. And tell us um, a little bit about yourself, um, your time serving in the military and where you are now. And then we'll talk about some other things. Definitely. Well, um, as you say, I'm, I count you as a personal friend and, and uh, you definitely have helped me uh, throughout my journey. Um, prior to, I think, meeting you, I had a wonderful life, beautiful life. Um, was, like I said, I was a, a lieutenant colonel in the Army, uh, worked on Obama's staff in 2008. Um, just really felt like, you know, I had the world you know, in my hands. Uh, doing everything that I love. I love telling the stories of our soldiers and, and sailors um, in the military. I uh, had two beautiful boys. Uh, just living the life, I thought, of, um, you know, that everybody's supposed to, to, to be living, that American dream. I, I didn't feel like that I had too many cares in the world. Um, so it, it's it's been this journey um, with having, you know, something so traumatic happen to you and then it redefines who you are and what you are. Um, I guess I'll just start there. Okay. Um, I know that this is a little bit difficult for you and I'm grateful that you're taking the opportunity to share because right now, everywhere, young girls are deciding to either graduate high school and go to college, or they're deciding after they've taken the ASVAB and they've been in junior ROTC that they may decide that they want to go to the military. And I know that it shakes parents at their core when they hear that their daughter wants to go and serve in the military, not just of the things that are happening in the world, but there's some things that happen internally in the military that women are subjected to harassment, verbal abuse, sexual assault, that oftentimes we don't think about because we do it in the name of serving our country. But there's some things that I don't think you signed up for. Can you share a little bit about that? Statistics are high as it relates to um, sexual assault in the military. Um, violence remains you know, pervasive in 2018. You know, 2,500 service members were sexually assaulted, you know, 13,000 being men and 7,500 being men. And so when you think about those numbers and those statistics, it brings us to the conversation that we're having today of your experience serving in the military. Well, as we sh as I share with you, this isn't something that I've uh, ever spoken about publicly, um, just because as a PR and marketing person, you're always trying to tell someone else's story and not your own. Um, but, you know, in sharing my own story and, and standing in my own truth, um, I was assaulted in 2002. Uh, and at that time in the military, I was a major, I was uh, up for promotion. And um, when it happened, you know, it was very big and a lot of stuff going on because it was a, a, a ranking officer uh, above me. Uh, and our boss basically gave me an, a choice. He, his choice was you can forget this happened and move on with your career and just forget about it. Or you can, we can go through the process of, you know, the legal process and, and, and all of that. And so there was a choice that I was given, which I didn't feel like there should have been a choice. It was clear cut. Um, but it was, it was something that I was given. And, and I feel like I became a part of the problem because I decided not to pursue the charges because I, I took the out. I said, okay, let me just forget it. But of course, then that I feel like set me up for, um, you know, to, to, to not to say I was assaulted again, but to be hurt again. Uh, so in 2013, when I was in Afghanistan and I was assaulted there, uh, it was a different experience because it was it was a familiar experience because the first time I knew I knew my assailant this time I didn't. And so that just brings up so many things, because um, when you've been assaulted by somebody, you don't know their face, you don't know who they are. That person's still out there. So it it it, it just brings with it so many more um scars and, and, and things um, that you have to deal with. It's just like you said, it's a daily battle. It is in, if you know anybody who has post-traumatic stress disorder, they will tell you that every single day, it's a, we're trying to get over that, uh, 
that trauma every single day. It's a daily process. It's not something that, like you said, you just go through and it's over. It's a daily process. Every single day, we're hoping that nothing's triggered. We hope that when we're out in the grocery store, you know, someone, there's not a loud noise that's going to startle us. And I think you and I had an experience where we were at a, we were at a conference and there was a bunch of balloons popping. And all of a sudden, I just started crying because it was it just took me back to that space. So you just never know because that it's it's always there. Um, but like you said, those triggers are there. Sometimes you don't even know what they are. You don't even know what they look like. Um, but again, it, at this point, I'm just I'm just grateful to be able to, um, I guess, speak my truth in public and, uh, and, and know that I've been able to get not um, over it, but I'm, I'm still working through it. But it's made me a better person. Uh, in, in everything that I do, because I look at where I've been and where I was, um, and now I'm this whole different person. Becoming this whole different person, as you stated, has been a journey for you and in carrying your hidden scars. And I have to tell you, you carry them well. And oftentimes I wonder, is it because of the healing that has taken place with you internally? Or are you just really good at masking your pain? And the reason I'm asking that question is because there are women and men who are going to be watching. And sometimes I don't know if they can tell the difference. Can you share with us? I think you know the difference. So can you share with our audience on how they can determine if they're masking their pain or are they really walking to a space of healing? Sure. Well, I think you, you mentioned faking it or feeling it, F faking it or faithing it. And I think yeah. I had to do both. Uh, in the beginning, you know, when it first happened, I faked it. I said I was, you know, fine. I didn't need the counseling. I didn't need it. I was fine. I just wanted to go home. I wanted to be with my family. Let me get over this just like I did the, the first time. But all of those scars, all of those things just kept coming back. It didn't matter what I did. You know, um, so so the faking it, 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 it can only last so long. Right. And so I had to deal with it. Um, you know, I was going to church, you know, thinking that church would be, you know, uh, with, with serving others and being able to to keep, you know, to not think about my own pain and, and, and really try to help other people. And so that helps a lot for me, uh, just just really helping serving in the church. But the other piece was. Um, I had to, I had to deal with my own stuff. I had to go to counseling. I had to go through the, you know, years of, of counseling to be able to get to a place where I could even speak without crying. Uh, and if you knew me before, you would know I would never cry. Um, but, uh, but it, it does something to you. Like I said, it makes you a different person. And so you can only fake it so long. And so that's why, um, I had to I had to seek um, seek care through mental health uh, through the through the system and um, and it really did help. Um, there's a lot of programs out there. You know, I'm a I'm a counselor by my my background is in counseling as well. So I do believe in therapy. I believe that it helps every single person. But when it comes to a sexual assault, it's a, it's a special it's a special thing. Um, it's a special type of person that you need to, to, um, to address that. And every therapist that you meet may not, may not be the one for you. And you just have to find the right person that helps you deal with, um, you know, deal with all of that, uh, that stuff that, that you're carrying around. But, um, but you can only fake it so long. Yeah, I think that we're all pretty good at um, faking it and faithing it. You know, that space that we find ourselves in when we're ready to step out into the world, what did that look like for you now? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm taking a breath because I want to phrase I want to phrase this correctly, because having two incidences in your life, it has a tendency to kind of not only shake you, but break you. And being a mom of two boys um, in, in that space, how and I'm, I'm asking this question because how does your family respond to the things that you have been through? And were you able to find the solace and comfort there? I'm asking because I want our audience to understand that they have a role to play as well in the healing that comes um, after being assaulted. Well, I, I, you know, I guess I consider myself a strong person. And I know when it happened to me, I really, I didn't tell my family. I didn't tell anybody. I told one person and that was my, my partner at the time. And he was not supportive at all. And it really broke me. 
Um, and, uh, and so I didn't, I, you know, I felt the guilt, I felt the shame. I felt all of these things that, you know, everybody feels when, when something bad happens. Uh, so I didn't have, I didn't feel like I had people to talk to and it took years of me, you know, serving and going through counseling. And I met this wonderful coach at one point in my life. And, um, and she told me that it was time, it was time to, uh, to get out of, to, to stop being stuck in that space that I was in. Um, and so I will tell you that sometimes your family may not be the person that, um, or they, they may not be the place where your comfort lies. It was, for me, it was this person who's, who just happens to be uh, on the other end of this camera, um, who was there for me, who, who showed and told me that I was better than what happened to me and that who I was, um, is not who I was going to be, uh, and that um, all basically gave me tools and, and tasks to do to ensure that I was successful. And I will tell you that I am still forever grateful because that um, that kind of talk where she get, it was it was one of those um, what do you call it? It's like a um, those come to Jesus talks where somebody says, okay, I need it. It's time. It's time for you to stop. You know, you, you've been there in this space long enough because it was four years for me. I spent four years in the darkness. Uh, and this person said to me, I need it. It's been, it's been long enough. It's time for you to, to, to tell a different story and to do something different. And I tell you, I never looked back. Um, I believe what she said. I believed who she said I was. Uh, and, um, and honestly, I'm, you know, today I am a CEO of a company. Uh, we're working to 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 build um, up other Black women uh, companies. Um, you know, funding them with a twenty five million dollar fund. Uh, so, all the stuff that I'm now able to do, um, honestly, it's because of someone who was not in my family. Uh, she 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 happened to be a coach, uh, a sorority sister who who saw me and saw my pain when we were talking. I mean, we never talked about what I was, what was going, what was going on in my life. But at some point she just said, I see something in you. There's, and she, she got me to talking and I finally unloaded it and, and she, she received it and she helped me get out of that, that place that I was in. And um, I can tell you, I've, since then I've written two books I've uh, interviewed over 500 folks, 500 professionals uh, and community leaders um, telling their stories because we're, I'm still a storyteller. So stories that may not have never been, ever been told. Um, and again, you know, working, extending that to, to helping build up other businesses. So, um, so God to the, God be the glory um, that, um, that it's a process, but I thank you. I thank you for it. For being there. Thank you, Anita, for sharing those words with us. When we come back after the break, going to bring Anita in. We're going to talk to everybody because I think there's something joyous to celebrate when you're on the other side of the pain. When we're back after the break. We're all impacted by the culture, whether we know it or not. From politics to music and entertainment, it's a huge part of our lives. And we're going to talk about it every day right here on The Culture with me, Faraji Muhammad, only on the Black Star Network. It's time to be smart. Roland Martin's doing this every day. Oh, no punches! Thank you, Roland Martin, for always giving voice to the issues. Look for Roland Martin in the whirlwind, to quote Marcus Garvey again. The video looks phenomenal, so I'm really excited to see it on my big screen. Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. See, there's a difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. I gotta defer to the brilliance of Dr. Carr and to the brilliance of the Black Star Network. I am rolling with rolling all the way. Honored to be on a show that you own, a Black man. <laughs> Own the show. Folks, Black Star Network is here. I'm real uh, revolutionary right now. Wow. Roland was amazing on that. Stay black. I love y'all. I can't commend you enough about this platform that you've created for us to be able to share who we are, what we're doing in the world, 
and the impact that we're having. Let's be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You can't be black on media and be scared. You dig? Welcome back to A Balanced Life with Dr. Jackie, bringing everybody back in. I want us to have a little bit of conversation in the time that we have left about the power of overcoming. I think that all of us are in that space where we've been somewhere, someone has said something to us, done something to us, made us feel some kind of way, and just a whole lot of other things that um, we are talking about today. Because honestly, the hidden scars you know, shouldn't be the things that weigh us down. We should be able to look at them and say, I saw you, but I overcame you too. Hey, everybody. Hey. <laughs> I know we're like, ah, a little heavy. <laughs> I know, right? A little heavy. Anita, we love you. And thank you so much for sharing with us because yes, yes, you know, we all are yes. in the space of being our own bosses. Mm-hmm. Everyone on this panel is an entrepreneur and we work with people from all walks of life. But sometimes we don't know every person's story at the moment that we meet them. And you've given us some insight on how to see the person. Doesn't matter what their past was, what their pain was, what their triggers are. We want to exercise humanity in all that we do. And I'm coming to Corey Briscoe and I'm going to make my rounds because, Corey, in listening to um, Anita talk, you have women in your family and some young people in your family when you think about the things that Anita has shared, where does it place you as a male in your understanding of how to reach a woman and let her know her value and her worth? You know, and, and Anita's incredible and one, I want to thank her for her amazing service to this country. Um, you know, I, I paused and I listened to her and I actually was just so grateful for my dad. Like I, I, um, it warmed my heart that I had a dad who, who loved on me so much that helped me to be sensitive to the women in my life, that helped me to have incredible um, EQ, that made me realize that there is a privilege and a responsibility to manhood in America, if we're just honest, um, but that you had to understand that and use that to lift up the sisters, the nieces, those who unfortunately haven't always had, or maybe I'll say it like this, whose voices sometimes are taken from them. They've always had the voice. They just, sometimes it's been taken from them. And so for me, um, I doubled down on that. How do I show up to people that I love specifically to, to women in my life? And how do I show up, one, as an ally, but two is someone that they can trust and lean on. You know, toxic masculinity is a real conversation in America, and it's one that has to be had. And the inability to have that conversation and deal with those real challenges often lead to situations like this where we just sweep stuff under the the rug or not deal with things. And so for me, it it is being emotionally present and showing yourself um, as an ally with real tangibility. Thank you for sharing that. Chef Rock. Yes, uh, so I, I definitely, um, I, I wanna thank uh, Anita for, thank you for sharing your story and your, your um, for your courage. It is uh, an inspiring and um, I just applaud you because, um, you know, I, I'm, I'll, I'll lead that, I'll lead into to how we can show up as men, um, I'm you know I'm 45 and I've been married for quite some time, and I'm a chef as well. I'm, I'm in the restaurant business, and men want to fix things. Uh, uh, what can I do? And chefs, restaurant people, uh, we have a motto: make it happen, right? And what I've learned is that those that skill or those skills uh, are not transferable when it comes to showing up for women um, necessarily, especially when it comes to uh, someone, um, you know, uh, sh- sharing their pain or just just venting, right? So I, I think that the one thing that I've learned, and it's been a hard lesson for me, is that what we can do is 
uh, quite frankly, we, we can just, you know, just shut up, right? Um, and and ask questions. I think uh, Dr. T will appreciate, you know, I've, I've learned more about mirroring. Um, I'm, I'm sure Charlotte would appreciate that as well, everyone. But, uh, you know, I think that we, I, I can speak for myself and, and many of my compadres is that we often do want to fix. I think that's natural that we want to fix. We want to, what can I do? We, we get angry when, when someone that we love is attacked. Uh, but, but what I found in the, in the time, and this is with staff, no, no matter the gender or the age, it's just being present as, as Corey uh, just said, just being present and receiving, not making a judgment call, not, not going to, this is what you should have done. This is what we can do. Just, I hear you. I see you. And that's even with, with customers as well. So again, it's a constant practice, but I think that that has worked for me. It, it, it's it, it just mirroring back and, and letting the person know that I saw you when I first did it. It was weird, but uh, it was received so well. And, and I think we moved into another facet of our relationship. Um, so I just want to encourage men, all people, but definitely men, because we do have a tendency to talk and, and to try to fix and, and, and how this could have gone another way. When I, I, you know, I don't know if, if you all agree, but um, what's worked best is for us to just be still, uh, let the person across from you, let you know, I see you, I hear you, and, and you matter. What you said matters. So for um, Mocha, Dr. Tierney, and Charlotte, um, give um, words of encouragement to Anita and other women who may be facing and trying to not only live out their truth, but finding someone that they can trust so that they can move on in their lives. Dr. Absolutely. So Anita, one of the things that you said that you did is something that I tell my clients all the time. Um, you have to get real about what you feel so that you can really heal. And you mm. get permission to be vulnerable um, in that space. So when Dr. Jackie called that thing out, you took your mask off, you know, you stopped faking it, you stopped saying I'm fine and you got real about it and the healing began. So kudos to you for that. And that's something that I tell all of my clients and, and all of us, you know, that faking it till we make it, we become so preoccupied and we spend so much of our energy trying to make things look as if they were or how they were or trying to hide that thing when really that's energy that you should be giving to yourself to heal that space you know to love on yourself to open yourself up to the people that god has sent you to really hold your hand and walk you through that space it's okay i promise you just just right here on this panel you have a good five people just right here that if you don't know anybody else shoot me a message dr jackie a message charlotte a message anita a message mocha a message any one of us will be more than happy to love on you and to let you know that it's okay and help you walk out your healing mocha wow i mean Sister Anita, you, you have touched me. Believe you me. I mean, you're, you're amazing. And the one thing I just want to say is for whoever's watching, just know as a woman, you are so strong. You really are. You are strong. You are resilient. And um, on, the, on the moments that you feel a little weak, it's okay. And the trust factor comes just like Dr. Tierney said, when you just open yourself up and allow yourself to, um, to know that if God is sending you someone who, who you can open up to and just share, then the healing is going to come from there. And the strength is knowing that the healing is going to be painful at times. You know, that's real. But the pain is, is only temporary because when you come out on the other side, whoo, I mean, you've written two books. Like I just you blew me away. So thank you. Thank you for sharing. And I just encourage all women to, to take take bits and pieces from from all that has been said. Charlotte Avery. Um, like everyone, I want to echo the fact that um, Anita, you are amazing. And the fact that you took the opportunity to share your, your story so that we could hear your voice about the things that have happened in your life is just so amazing. And I love what you said. I love what you said about not getting over it, but working through it. So powerful. So very powerful. And what I want to say, and to the audience and to you know everybody who's watching is this is that you know what your tears are not for nothing there are pa there's power in your tears there's power in your truth 
There's power in your testimony. And there is so much triumph and victory when you get to the place where you can share and no longer be held captive. So be brave like our sister Anita here and, you know, find your safe space. Give yourself grace and others around you to be able to get to the place where you can tell your truth and tell your story so that you can be set free. Anita. No words. We love you. We are grateful for your presence today. Our audience, we love you. And we wouldn't be tackling some of the difficult things that we talk about if we didn't believe that there was joy in the journey. I identify and recognize as I do my reflection that not everything that we do is easy. But there are seasons in our lives where we have to take that moment to say, I can step out of this space, the space that's holding me hostage, the space that keeps me bound, the space that won't allow me to breathe and be my true self. Because all of us are greater than what we've been through. And it is through our overcoming that we allow ourselves to show up each and every day in our own lives that we may give others power in their voice and strength and courage for their journey. Thank you everyone for watching today, A Balanced Life with Dr. Jackie here at the Black Star Network.